This is Ms. Waitzik. Yes. Waitzik. Yeah, you got it right. I told her I was going to really screw up her name. And out of respect for her, I was just so nervous about saying her name. So, <laughs> um, we're really, really happy that she could be here today. She has a ton of expertise in the area of organizational change and working with child serving systems and other organizations to help sustain, support, and sustain change. Um, and part of that, um, that experience is her expertise around leading to conflict. So without any, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that you don't want to be hearing me, so I'll hand it over and the um, floor is all yours. Thank you. Thank you so much for being it's here. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. What a beautiful part of the state. It's just gorgeous. I've never been to State College before and I was driving here and I was just uh, in awe. It's beautiful here. And, I, and, the ni and some of the nicest people I've met in anywhere in the country that I've um, traveled, which is a lot of places, I have to say. So please take that as a compliment. It's been very welcoming and, and great to be here. Does it sound like my mic is on? No. No, but you're good. I'm okay? Yeah. Do you want, but for your purposes, does it need to be on? Uh, yeah, I'm good. You can hear me okay? Okay. Perfect. All right, for those of you in the back, you can sit at the back at your own peril because I don't know if my voice will travel that far without the mic. So anytime you choose to move up, we will welcome you up to these tables up here. If you choose to stay back there, that's absolutely okay. So I just want to tell you a little bit about my background and a little bit about this particular love of mine, and then we'll get started. Um, so I actually was trained as a lawyer, which means I spent three years studying what conflict was about and what my role in beating other people would look like. And I spent some time actually doing that work in the child welfare and juvenile delinquents, delinquency systems in a couple of different states. And I sort of felt after a, just a couple years that it didn't, make, it didn't make sense, that the court system as it was in the early 90s was not a great place to solve our complex challenges for children, youth, and families. And I felt really limited by the options that were that I felt were available to me in support of these folks um, that the law provided. So I went and was trained as a mediator in the early 90s. And I remember the first night after training, I called home and I said, I found my calling. I love this. I love the fact that I can sit with people who are are really in disagreement, they're, having, they're struggling to move forward, and I can help them hold a conversation and I don't have to be responsible for the outcome. It was great. There's nothing worse than sitting and defending um, a, a mom who's in a termination of parental rights case and feeling the weight of that responsibility as she's sitting next to me and sobbing. I hated that. It was so hard, and I felt such compassion for her. But in mediation, when I have that same mom and the child welfare caseworker, and sometimes the young person, and maybe some of the other resources, we can have a conversation where they all engage and figure out how to move forward, and they own that outcome, and I just loved that. So after I became trained as a mediator, I met Dr. Phyllis McGrab, who some of you may know is the director of the Georgetown University Center for Child and Human Development. And it was right around the time that IDEA was reauthorized and required that mediation be available to families and the system in special ed. And she really was the only person at Georgetown, but because she was the director, she could make these decisions. She said, we have to have some capacity at this center, at this technical assistance center, around collaborative decision making and mediation and all of these ways of engaging people in making decisions, solving problems, moving forward. And so my real training and education came at, at Georgetown um, on the sort of in the field. And in fact, Wendy Luckenbill was in the first group of family members that we offered training to at the Georgetown Institutes, I believe in 1996. 
So it's been a, and it was called Negotiating Together. And I'll just tell you this little story. Wendy was not engaged in this little group of family members who decided after the first day that they were going to mutiny and they were going to leave. It was a two day training. And I was, it was my first training ever. And I was devastated. And so Phyllis, in her wisdom, said, let's try to understand what the issue is. And so what they told her is, we didn't think you were going to try to help us get along. We thought you were going to try to help, or you were going to help us learn how to carry a briefcase and a yellow legal pad and get our way in negotiation. And this was in 1996. So it was a way different climate. See how far we've come in almost 20 years? We completely think differently about advocacy and negotiation and collaboration than we did back then. And so I'm happy to say that that first training led to a whole bunch of other stuff, including leading through conflict, which um, I'm here to talk about today. And leading through conflict, just to warn you, is a three-day training. So, and we're here for an hour and 20 minutes left. So please understand that I picked, I think, a couple of concepts from this training that I think not only are sort of give you the highlights, but also might be useful to you. And because I certainly don't want you to leave here with a couple of good thoughts. I'd like you to leave here with a couple of good ideas. So this is what I think we're going to do today. Oh, come on. This is supposed to work. All right, so this is what I think the objectives are today. And by the way, the more that we can make this a conversation, the more you'll get out of it. So I am absolutely happy at any time for you to stop me and say, but what about? Or I've had this, I can't diagnose your experience right here, but you can say I've had this experience with conflict and it resonates with me. So anytime you want to chime in, ask a question, um, add to the conversation, please, I totally welcome that. It will make it even more applicable for you. So what we're going to do is develop some shared understanding of these three concepts, collaboration, leadership, and conflict. The leadership and conflict sort of makes sense given the title, Leading Through Conflict. But we do it, we, we lead through conflict in the context of collaboration.